Hi, I'm Paul Battaglia, and this is section 8.5. I'm joined by Gabe and Brittany today, and I know you're probably wondering why we have these uh, titles here, which we'll get to in a minute, um, but we're really trying to give you an idea of how maybe you can structure uh, the lessons. And Brittany, I think a good place for us to start off is uh, probably the fundamental counting principle. So talk mm -hmm. to us a little bit about how you go through that with your students. So before even mentioning the fundamental counting principle, mm -hmm. I like to just give my students an example, say, all right, well, let's say we have five types of ice cream. Okay. And then we have three toppings. Okay. And then we have two different syrups. Okay. Well, how many sundaes can we make Perfect. out of that? And so that gets them thinking about the fundamental right. counting principle okay. without even knowing it. And then right. I'll actually define it for them. Right. And then I'll say, well, what if um, order matters? What if we okay. have repetition? Right. Then where do we go from here? Great, great. And I think, Gabe, I, I know you have a really neat activity that, mm -hmm. that you do with students because I think, like all of us here, you find that your students actually struggle with the, the differences between combinations and permutations. So. Sure. so to introduce the idea of combinations to my students, I like to give them just, or I like to have three envelopes okay. with no markings on the outside okay. and tell them inside the envelopes there's, there's a prize. And while doing combinations, they'll be the same prize. So I'll tell them, I don't know, $100, a dollar, okay. just okay. something. Just fake money. Right. Sure. So what I'll do is I'll walk around the classroom and I'll give one student the first envelope, another student the second envelope, and another student the third envelope. And I'll say, you know what? I don't really like you three. But I'm gonna <laughs> choose I'm gonna choose three other students. So I'll take the envelopes back and I'll say, Oh, well, I'll give the first envelope to you, second envelope to you, and the right. third envelope to you. And as I'm going about this, we'll have conversations about, well, how many different ways out of 20, 30 students can I choose three winners? Right. And from here, well, I'll sort of introduce this idea of what a combination is okay. and really emphasize that the order that I pass these envelopes out doesn't really matter. Right. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if I give one to Jimmy and then Steve or Steve and then Jimmy. Right. They, they both end they up both with the won. same amount of money. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But then I come back and I have three envelopes. This time, one has a million dollars inside of it, okay. one has a hundred dollars, and one has one dollar. Right. So here I walk around, I'll just choose three students at random, pass out the envelopes, pull the same trick where I say, I don't really like you, let's give them back, right, right, and right. I'll pass that to three different students. And here what I'm showing is that, well, the order really does matter, right, of course, yeah. and the number of ways that I can pass these out to the students is much different than it was where the order was the same. Because if I give one student a million dollars and another student one dollar, it really mattered which order I passed out those two envelopes. Right, right. Yeah. So here's how I sort of lay the foundation for permutations and address the differences between a permutation and a combination. And I think what's important uh, from a teacher's perspective is, I like to use the word significance because what Gabe was doing there was actually displaying the significance uh, and the significant difference between just but everybody winning $100 or those mm -hmm. three people versus those three people winning a million dollars versus a hundred dollars versus one dollar. And that's really important for you to portray to your students. So let's just suppose that maybe through that example, um, you kind of get through them uh, a little bit, but you'd like to maybe kind of spice it up and make it a little bit more kinesthetic. So hence the titles we have here. So same idea as Gabe, really nothing majorly different, but the idea here is to give students an understanding that, okay, if, if there were three of you here and, and you can pick any three students you like and say, you know, let's come on up to the front of the class here and let's talk about the way we arrange you. Let's say we're going to take a photo. Mm -hmm. of you guys and, and, and we talk about whether or not the photo is considered different or the same mm -hmm. and so if you took a photo right now of us you know there's there's some significance behind where we're standing Brittany right now is acting as the president <laughs> Gabe is acting as the secretary I'm acting as the vice president so you know again at first glance it looks like okay fine but watch what happens when we switch right so let's just suppose that Brittany and Gabe switch spots Okay, so you ask your students, all right, did, you know, is, is it different? Is the photograph any different? And if the answer is, well, no, because all three people are in the photograph, they're kind of missing the point. Mm -hmm. It's vastly different. You know, now the, the president used to be Brittany. You know, it's not anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now it's Gabe. So it's really, really a nice little thing just to show people just the, the, again, the significance of permutations versus combinations. Mm -hmm. Now, Brittany, talk to us briefly about maybe some calculator issues that come up. All right, so a lot of students have different calculators and some of the students don't know how to know the difference between permutation and combination right. buttons. Right. And so I like to give my students a lot of examples and I'll go around and actually look at each of theirs and see just if they know how to input sure. one or the other, you know, or both yep. of them. Yeah. Um, so that they get more familiar with their own calculator right. and so that when an exam or homework comes up, 
they're Not comfortable problem, with right. it. Yeah. And I think it's so important because I know my students, you know, they're, they're sharing calculators. They forget their calculator using somebody mm -hmm. else's calculator. So, you know, the buttons, while they may look the same, you know, they might be hidden in different menus. So yeah. Brittany makes a very good point there. I hope these tips have been helpful for you and you find much success in Section 8.5.